Hello and welcome to an exclusive Next Level webinar. Welcome to Ground Zero. I'm your host, Adam Carswell, joined by my fantastic co-hosts, Anthony Vecino and Mark Caesar. And today we will be entering the minds of Aaron Eiler and April Munson, who uh, I know, guys, we, we didn't really talk about this in detail yet, but I'm going to go with the co-founders of the Ground Zero Mastermind. Um, also, fellow Aaron's currently still a student, and April is a graduate of the same college that I went to, Westminster College. So shout out to all of our Titans. Um, we got a lot of names to cycle through here today, so I guess I'll just pick two out of the four. April, Aaron, Mark, Anthony. We'll go with... Uh, Aaron and Mark, you guys are in the middle of my list here. Aaron, how are you feeling today? Mark, say you after Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling great, man. I'm super excited to dive into this. Uh, I'm super excited as this is really something we haven't presented on in front of a crowd yet. So definitely excited to get our feet wet there and really expose everybody to what we've been working on. And yeah, I mean, I'm just super, I'm super pumped. Love it. Mark. Same here, man. I'm I'm stoked. I'm elated to be here amongst, you know, some great minds and just looking to have fun and just learn and, you know, share with you guys as well. That's right. That's right. Okay, so it's time to, to keep it rolling. I'm really looking forward to this presentation. I just know how much work Aaron and April have put into it. Uh, so big thank you to our production team and everyone working behind the scenes here today to make this happen. Um, if you are with us, Live, thank you for investing your most valuable resource with us here today, your time. I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Raise Masters, the number one mastermind for elite capital raisers. Uh, you can find out more information on Raise Masters by clicking the link that Rena is so awesomely going to post here in a second. You can attend our upcoming webinar and learn more about Raise Masters there. Um, and again, if you're with us on the replay, we want to say thank you as well for investing your time with us too. Make sure you smash that like button. Let's get the chat warmed up for all of our amazing guests in attendance. Please punch in your name, where you're tuned in from. Uh, it's always cool to see where in the world we are being connected. And if you're with us on Facebook, don't forget, you know, use the comments there to give us a hashtag next level, but also Click on the Zoom link in the comments. You can come join us over here in Zoom where the party is, uh, is really popping. So there we go. Oh, and how can I forget? 3 a.m. in the Philippines. Wow. <laughs> we're we're going like to ready. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> we're international today. And um, how can I forget, ladies and gentlemen, if you are listening on the Dream Chasers platform, be sure to drop a five-star rating there as well. And you can also follow a link in the description that'll take you to the video replay. So a life-changing amount of information about to be shared today. Grab your notepads, uh, maybe your Word documents if you're going technical, <laughs> exit out of any other distractions you might have on your computer and just get the most you can out of this webinar. As I mentioned, the backstory a little bit, you know, I played basketball at Westminster College. Aaron did as well. So we're both hoopers. I think that's how we first connected. He'll tell you the whole story maybe here in a little bit. But um, it was about a year ago, a little almost a year ago. And, man, this kid just kept knocking on my door asking if I could help him out. I'm like, I don't know, but here, can you do this? Here, can you do this? Can you do this? And next thing you know, he's starting his own mastermind. And it's been amazing to watch how much he's grown and how much confidence he's gained over the past year. It's really starting to snowball. Um, dude's going to be like the coolest kid on campus when he gets back to school. I don't think he realizes that, that yet. And April's definitely helping him out a ton. So um, in April, similar story. Uh, there was like a Westminster networking event and somehow we, our paths collided and it's just been um, amazing ever since. She is so hungry and somebody with a winning story, honestly, both of them. So um, that's enough out of me. Let me give a little, like, you know, let me just give a little teaser though on Mark and Anthony, because there's a significant reason why they're here. Shout out to our boy, Austin Linney in the, in the stands. Austin, thank you. We know you've co-hosted many Next Level webinars in the past. We thank Wish you for- Wish you were here. <laughs> we thank you for sharing the stage. Um, so Anthony Vecino, uh, we've met just through general networking in the commercial real estate investment space. He's connected with Aaron. He's been very supportive of this idea, this mastermind. And then he's also happens to be publishing or he will be, or he's, he's helping Austin Linney, who we just gave a shout out to, and I co-author our first book. And he is the best ever to work with. If you can ever get a chance to work with Anthony Vecino, go for it. 
And then same goes for Mark Caesar, someone who's up and coming in the commercial real estate investment space. I just have seen his willingness to just dive in and just go for it. Someone who's not afraid to dive in. He's going to go really far, guys. He's, he already is. So make sure you attend his meetup on, on Monday nights. He can get, give you more inf information there. But also Mark and Aaron, I know have in the past, they've also hit it off too. So that's why Mark's here. Thank you guys for letting me kind of get that all out there. We'll flip it over to uh, to April and Aaron now. And, and guys, the, the stage is yours. Let's see what we got. All right, April, you go ahead and, oh, perfect. She's already on it. Look at her go. All right, let me see. But yeah, guys, so um, first of all, I just want to say welcome to our webinar today. Welcome to Ground Zero. I'm super, super, super excited to share with you guys what we have going on today. There it goes. So yeah, really wonderful to see some familiar faces out there in the crowd. What's up, Ron? What's up, guys? Really love to see you here. So uh, to any of you out there who don't know me, my name is Aaron Eiler. I'm going into my senior year currently at Westminster College in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, about a year ago, I was really fighting what I like to call the toughest battle I've really ever faced. And it was going on in the six inches between my ears. And for as far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a professional basketball player. I, I got as far as playing in college. Then uh, a lot of things in my life really happened that caused me to switch gears. And I started to realize that I was going to need to investigate a different path for myself. And the problem was that I had absolutely no clue what that looked like. And all my life, I was focused on that one goal. And now all of a sudden, I had to completely change direction. And I had to somehow discover a totally new passion when I just walked away from the only thing that I'd really ever known. And I truly felt like I had lost my identity altogether. I mean, I had these other skills that I'd spent, but I'd spent so much time with literally a basketball in my hands that I didn't believe in any of my other skills. So basketball was really the only area of my life that I felt that I was truly confident in the ability to step out into the light and deliver. And, but now I had to find something else. And at that time, I truly had to just stare straight into the pain that I was going through and try to see and find what truly mattered to me. And it took me a seriously long time, but eventually I really started to see that my values, my beliefs, my wants, my dreams, it all started to come back to me. And I, I was slowly realizing that basketball had secretly been this illusion for me that I was so distracted by that I had literally lost sight of the things that truly mattered to me and I wanted out of my life. And sometimes the best way to add to your life is to subtract from your life. And that is exactly what I had to do in this moment in time. And that's what I like to call ground zero for myself. And I won't go any further into that because I'm going to get further into that as we go throughout our presentation. But uh, for now, I just really wanna go ahead and pass the mic off to my wonderful partner, April. Hi everyone, thank you so much, Aaron. So I just wanted to give a little backstory for how I got connected to Aaron. Aaron and I got connected through Adam. Um, I met Adam during a Westminster net networking symposium that I thought I completely messed up. I had no problem making a fool of myself and I reached out to him just looking for some support for you know what I could expect as an alumni coming up because I was getting ready to graduate in about two months. And um, he was just really fascinated with my story. He didn't really let me get any questions. And he was like, I'm going to connect you with all these people and you need to connect with Aaron. So um, Aaron and I started working on this project. And up until that point, I was really questioning myself about, you know, who am I? Where am I going? My experience is a little non-traditional. It's not the same as everyone else's. So I just graduated with my degree about a month ago at the age of 29 with two kids. So um, you know, I'm just really kind of thinking about what does that next step look like for me and, um, you know, doing it in a way where I can't just, you know, move and take on every opportunity. It's, it's difficult when I have to work around a couple other um, barriers almost. And uh, I realized that success really does begin at the end of your comfort zone. And we really have been enabled to do a whole lot more now virtually. So allowing myself to put myself out there and get behind the computer and um, get behind the screen and press record has really been uh, a different experience for me, but it's really changed the trajectory of my, my career now coming out as a, a non-traditional graduate. So I was, just really ready to go all in and and it really just started with finding a mentor yeah so going into our next point here guys um during that time that that personal ground zero moment that i like to call and for any of you guys who have gone through one of those before for me i just really got tired of playing small i got tired of 
everything being so freaking difficult and I never wanted to go backwards again. And I never wanted to go through that kind of struggle again. I, I mean, I saw my parents struggle growing up and God bless them. They did their best to hide it. But I always just knew that I wanted to be more in control of my time because they never were. And I got so tired of dreaming about some great life that I was going to have someday when I laid in bed at night and not doing literally anything during the days to move me towards what I was picturing. And I was quite literally dying to do or just be a part of something more. So I started investing in myself. I wanted to learn about how to build wealth so that I can make the money that I needed to, to build the lifestyle for myself and my family that I always wanted. And obviously in researching that, one of the places I was introduced to was real estate. And obviously there's tons and tons of information out there thanks to the wonderful invention of the internet, but there's so much noise that I had no clue where to start. I didn't know what to learn. I didn't know who to listen to. I did not know which way was up. I just knew that I wanted so much more than what I currently had and what I was seeing. So I started reading about real estate and not long after that, we had a networking event at my college campus where I'd meet someone that really truly has changed my life since that day. And that man was none other than our wonderful host, Adam Carswell. The sheer impact that this man has had on my life is something that I cannot even put into words for you guys to fathom. That's why the first thing that April and I chose to introduce to you guys is really our framework to find an exceptional mentor. And the first step in doing that is re research someone who's doing slash done exactly what it is that you want to do. You can use LinkedIn, you can use Facebook, you can use Instagram, but I've personally found LinkedIn to be the most efficient for me. Just find someone that is doing something you're interested in doing, study them, see what moves they're making, books they've read, or steps that they took to get where they are, and just incorporate those things into your own personal success and growth. The next thing to do to fully maximize that opportunity is just find some common ground with them. In my personal experience, Adam goes, Adam had gone to the same college that I went to, and he also played basketball here. So I was able to use both of those things to relate to him and reach out to him. So like I said, maybe you played the same sport in high school. Maybe you went to the same high school or college, grew up in the same town. Uh, you have some of the same interest in books, movies, or maybe you grew, maybe you both grew up with single parents. Anything that you have that you can use to leverage with them, just to find something that you have in common and use that, reach out to them, relate to them. And then the next thing to do off of that is just be transparent. Be totally honest about where you are in your journey. When I reached out to Adam, I literally told him, I was like, listen, man, I do not know a darn thing about what you just presented on, but I'm interested. I want to learn more. Like, please help me out. I, yeah, that was pretty much exactly what I said. But just like I said, be honest about where you are in your journey. Don't act like you're some hotshot who deserves a conversation with them because you don't. And you're coming to them for value, not the other way around. So that leads me to my, excuse me, to my final point, which is provide value before you ask for it. Find out in what ways you can add value to them before you request value from them in any sort of way. You cannot just approach someone randomly on the internet and ask for an internship position. I promise you that is never, ever, ever going to work. And they're probably not even going to bother responding to you. Asking for advice is the best way to go. In asking for advice, you should point out something in common with them, as I've just mentioned. But it also puts them in a position to help you, which is going to make them feel good about doing so. And it automatically brings positive feelings into your relationship and it establishes a bond right off the bat. So those are our four things that we'd like to recommend to find an exceptional mentor. So armed with those tasks, what else could possibly be holding you back? You find an exceptional mentor, then what do you do? So like I said, I bet you're asking yourself what we did about it. How did we overcome our doubts, our fears, our struggles? How do we open ourselves up to these opportunities and grow? I mean, Obviously, we're here with you guys right now. So we had to do something along the way. Uh, we're up on this stage. We what? So the question just left is, what did we do to get here from where we were back then? But before I get into that, I really just kind of want to ask you guys a question. Uh, feel free to drop it in the chat or just write it down on your piece of paper. Do anything that you're, <laughs> that you're willing um, to do at the time. But just like I said, I just want to ask you guys a real que uh, question real quick, if that's okay with you. So the question is, why are you here? Like, seriously, why are you here today? Like, you can either write it down or put it in the chat, as I mentioned, but I'm really just trying to get you thinking. Some of you are just here for Adam, maybe Anthony, maybe Mark, maybe April. I know I'm there for every single one of these people, and these guys have done so, so much for me that I literally do anything for them, lay, them, lay myself down on the line, whatever that looks like. But for some of you, it's deeper than that, isn't it? Some of you are looking for clarity uh, to learn, to change. Some of you want to be more in control of your life 
Some of you want to set yourselves up for success so that your family is taken care of if the world ever changes again. Some of you are just looking to unlock your creativity to show the world exactly what you're made of. And some of you are just dying to do or be a part of something more just like I was. So I found a vehicle that was going to help me achieve the levels of growth that I had always craved for so, so long. But then I had to face an entirely new problem myself. I still hadn't faced myself. I was so happy to have found that mentor for myself, but my growth was still limited to my own mind. I was thinking small. I was scared. I didn't feel like I was good enough to reach the goals that I had dreamed of, but I was committed to at least try. So in my pursuits, I found that there really weren't any resources out there for people my age to learn how to get started in business. So Adam told me that I should start a podcast like his, and I quite literally told him he was out of his damn mind. So <laughs> who was going to listen to me? Who am I to try to teach people about things I know nothing about? If I started interviewing people like he does, they were literally going to tear me to shreds and I was just going to completely embarrass myself. So literally, what was the point at that time? And it took me some time, but I realized that I was looking at it all wrong, all wrong. I, I was thinking, who am I to do this instead of thinking, who am I not to do this? I was thinking that it somehow had to be perfect before I could get started. But if I waited to make it perfect before I began, then I wouldn't even be here with you right now. I never would have excuse me, gotten this far. I had to stop letting fear and not knowing stop me from taking the action that I needed to get to where I wanted to go. I always had to realize that seeing someone on the path is actually more attractive and inspiring than seeing somebody who's already there. I mean, my personal opinion, I used to always scroll through Instagram and I always see these videos of guys with their Lambos and their jets and all this stuff, but I was never impressed at how they, they had it now. I always wanted to know how the hell they did it. And they never included that in their posts. They never told you about those things. But as I sat there looking at those posts, I realized that those people were all making a difference in their own lives and in the lives of others because they took a step when nobody else would. And that's when I realized that's what I needed to do too. So in recognizing those internal beliefs in myself, that's where I had to take it to the next level and realize that anytime you think you can't, immediately do whatever that thing is and do it until it becomes comfortable. For me, that was pressing record. That was starting a podcast. That was doing many of these other things. Like I can tell you a year ago, I would not be doing this right now, but I had to overcome that. And accountability partners work great for this. Uh, you can just find somebody whose opinion you truly value enough to the point that if they tell you you're sucking it up today, it's going to hit you where it hurts. You have to realize and take that into, fact, into effect and realize that you're not doing something at the moment to move yourself forward, or you're either taking steps backward, whatever that looks like for you. If, if you can't do it for yourself, find somebody whose voice is gonna pierce through that and truly make an effect on you to change your actions. The next thing I realized was quiet your mind and sit in it. Shout out to Jason Ricks for teaching me this one. It's been so valuable, valuable for me ever since I learned it. It's just that so, so, so many problems can be solved if you just take the clutter out and just sit in that pain. I know it sucks. Trust me, I know it sucks. And it's the last thing you want to do. But if you can truly just face that pain or that fear, I promise you, you'll be all the better for it. You just, just feel it. Ask yourself questions about why you're experiencing it. If no one else is going to ask you the difficult questions, you have to ask yourself. And I know, I know how hard it is, but truly just dig in, man. Distractions don't solve real problems. And whatever that is for you, you need to get rid of it. Just take a few deep breaths and experience whatever that pain is for, for exactly what it is. And finally, stop worrying about clout or attention or what other people are going to think. Like literally the biggest thing for me is realizing that nobody else cares. <laughs> the longer you worry about what your high school bully is going to think about what you're doing right now, the longer you're holding yourself back from your purpose and your happiness. It, they're on their own path and so are you. And you just got to do what's right for you and turn the volume down on all the rest of the noise. Thank you so much for saying all of that, Aaron. I mean, even though we've gone over this a million times, just hearing you say it, I mean, it's always like I've heard it for the first time because it, it really just teaches me about my story. And my story is, you know, where you come from does not determine where you're going. I grew up in a really small town full of really small thinkers and I'm still here. And I feel like that has been um, 
quite difficult when it comes to trying to get excited about things that I want to do because the people that I want to talk to about it, they don't care. They don't want to listen. They question me. They don't say, well, why do you want to do what you're doing? Or what are your thoughts? Or where do you think you want to go? It's, you can't do that. That's a waste of time. Or you're selfish because you're going to leave your kids in daycare all day and you're not worried about them. And no one was asking me for my perspective about what I actually wanted to do. When I, when I look back at 2010, when I went to college for the first time, I wasn't ready because I was so worried about what everyone else wanted April to do and not what April wanted to do. I hadn't sat in that pain like Aaron was talking about and really felt it and figured out what I really wanted. And that was the hardest thing that I had to do. And I didn't even realize that that's what I needed to do until I was like three or four years into already doing that. I always had to be that person who was so busy, so busy, so busy. So I filled myself up with working three and four jobs at a time. I didn't actually allow myself to spend that time with myself. So in the middle of living for everyone else and trying to be so busy, how in the world could I ever figure out what was actually ever going to work for me? It just wasn't gonna happen. It was gonna take a really long time. And for a long time, I thought that those years working were going to be a lot of years wasted. And looking back now, after having the opportunity to go back to school, um, those years certainly are not wasted. There's a lot of opportunities that um, I can see growth along the way. I learned a lot about customer service and um, relating to other people and being patient with people. I mean, there's so many things you can learn between serving and, and retail and whatever, but um, I just... I, I just had to get to the point where I was living for myself and making choices to do the things that I wanted to do and get out of that comfort zone like we talked about and kind of shut off all that noise and quiet it and figure out what really was going to make me happy. So I, you know, decided that after having my first son a couple months later, I was going to go back to school. And that's exactly what I did. I wasn't worried about what everyone else was saying. I was so clear on my goals and my focus that this is what I was going to do. And I had no idea what was specifically supposed to come out of this when it came to getting my degree. But I knew that I trusted that the connections I was going to make along the way were going to lead me to the right place. And I can say that's 100% exactly what happened. I am so thankful for my experience. And um, even if you don't have all the answers to give someone, even if they are asking you those right questions, I've learned that it's okay to just be like, you know what, I'm not sure what that looks like, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I'm confident with the choice that I'm making. I can see where I want to go, but I don't know exactly what that looks like yet. And that is totally okay. So, um, it came back to not letting the lack of support affect the decisions that I made and not letting the fear of the unknown outweigh the fear of staying the same because that's just what's easy, right? So we're going to talk to um, you guys a little bit about what these external things look like just as like a broad overview. So the first is reducing that negativity intake. It is so important. Aaron had talked about like getting rid of the, the things in his world that were just kind of clouding him a little bit with like the people and the things like it, it's the same for me. I had to kind of walk away from all of it and spend that time alone and sit in it and figure out what that was going to be for myself. Aaron, do you want to jump in a little bit too and talk about a little bit of that negativity that you experienced? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, I can honestly say that over the last year, I've really realized that for me to be as productive as I wanted to, as I'd like to be or be as happy as I'd like to be, I had to distance myself from any content, friends, family members, coworkers that just contributed to me negatively and especially content. Content was a big one for me. Um, you, you just got to get rid of all of it. I don't care how cool the fight video that you saw last week was, or just you have to clear out all that clutter that's contributing to your negativity. Same with music. I mean, there's a lot of music out there that I literally just love to listen to, but I had to distance myself from it because it was contributing to my negative attitude. And quite honestly, it was dragging me down. So you just cannot be afraid. And I'm this is a little bit hint towards the next point. You cannot be afraid to to let those things go to allow yourself to grow. And for me, it was all of those things. And I'm sure it's every, it's different for every person. But like I said, you just cannot be afraid to distance yourself from those things to allow yourself to grow. Yeah, Aaron, I agree. I mean, I feel like there were so many days where I would drive to school in the morning and I wouldn't even have music on. I would just drive in complete silence. And then I'd be like, why did I just do that? But 
period. I, I just, I guess I just needed to quiet out some of that noise. Um, the next one is recognizing that it's okay to make sacrifices to elevate yourself. Um, just like how I said about deciding I was going to go back to school a couple months after having my first son, I had to give up some of that time with him, but I knew that I was doing what I needed to do. It felt right. And I had a clear goal in mind and I was completely okay with making that choice. And I mean, it helped that I knew the people who were working at the daycare that I chose. So it didn't break my heart that my girlfriend's mom was rocking my son to sleep while I was in class during the day. Like I had to make those choices that felt right for me, that worked for my family, for my situation and be confident in those choices that I made for myself that allowed me to propel my career forward forward. And that does take a lot of that time sitting with myself, figuring out what's right, what I want, what I don't want, and allowing myself to take that um, a step forward. The next one is don't let the lack of support from others on the outside affect your level of success. And this is one that I, I love to talk about because in the last two or three years, I've had to rearrange my friend group a little bit. And I thought that maybe I was a bad person for kind of walking away or not really trying to make the effort to hang out with certain people anymore. But even if I didn't realize this, what I was doing, that it was, it was happening anyway. I didn't feel good about the things that were happening on the outside. I wanted to spend more time over on this side and not so much sitting over on that side. And doing those things and making those choices for yourself is absolutely okay. <laughs> Aaron, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, um, yeah, it took me a while to realize it, but my false beliefs, whether it be internal or external, had already cost me way too much. I, I spent <laughs> way too much damn time looking for things I needed out of fake friends and people instead of providing and working on those things for myself. And I never realized that it's okay that most of your faith and support literally comes from strangers. Some of those quote unquote strangers that you're going to meet along the way will be there for you in ways that your so called friends literally never were. Um, shoot, right here, I shout out to Yona Weiss. He's quite literally one of those quote unquote strangers to me that I've honestly met one time and had a five to 10 minute conversation with. But he likes all my LinkedIn posts, he comments on them all, he, you know, messages me and tells me great things about how it is watching me grow and get involved in these things and, and he's truly there rooting for me and he really doesn't even know me so it's like what is this guy I mean another guy Mark Caesar he's on this call right now like he's been a wonderful boost of support that and I've really only had two conversations with the guy I mean I, I love the guy and I've had two conversations with him and he's here for me and supporting me and what I'm doing and like I said it just it's okay that it's a hard pill to swallow, but it is totally okay that your support comes from sources that you wouldn't typically believe. Yeah, I um, thinking about all of that, I, uh, I thought about a quote that really resonates with me that I want to share with everyone. And I can't remember where I found it. I don't, I don't know, but I know that the minute I saw this quote, I wrote it on a piece of paper and I stuck it on the wall and I still have it. Just marker on a paper because I was like, I need this. And it's, if you're not even a little bit scared, you're not playing a big enough game. And I feel like every time I read it, every time I see it, it kind of knocks me back in my seat a little bit and makes me take a step back and remember that like, even though I'm also doing some of these scary things, like I told Adam, I was like, I don't need a podcast. Who's going to listen to me? Like, I probably never would have done that. I would probably never have gone live like I did what yesterday, the day before yesterday. Like it pushes me out of my comfort zone, but these are the things I think that I've always, well, not that I think, the things that I know that I've always wanted to do, but I didn't have that mentor that was gonna give me that push to be like, Ava, you need to do it. You need to do it. Or even to hype you up a little bit to be like, I know you can do it. Just do it. Like girl, just do it. And it's all gonna be fine. And surprise, it has completely changed my world. Nothing bad happened. Only good things have happened, and it makes me feel better about myself too. So, I'm I'm always just a little bit scared, but it just propels me to take it to the next level and and to play a bigger game. No, 100. I I freaking love that quote, April, <laughs> and and your story that goes along with it. I mean, I know we've spoken about it numerous numerous times together, as well as on the podcast that. The goal you crave is often right on the other side of that fear. And if you can push through that fear today, you're literally halfway there. 
because consistently being able to push through that that barrier that fear is basically a superpower <laughs> i'm being completely honest with you and the more you push through that the more you know often that you do it it's going to become second nature for you and all of a sudden your growth is just going to snowball in ways you can't imagine yeah so now here we want to talk about some of the big takeaways that we want you to have from all of this and the first one i'm just going to start it off is having a mentor, finding a mentor, whatever that looks like. Like I said, my first experience with Adam was I was doing this networking symposium at Westminster and I wasn't supposed to be hosting it, but people were coming on. And I told my professor, I was like, hey, you got all these people on like 15 minutes early. You got like a hundred people. You need to go talk to your people. And he was like, April talk. <laughs> it's like, what do I do? And I just, I completely embarrassed myself. And I thought, oh my gosh, Whoever I reach out to is not gonna forget who I am. They're gonna remember that crazy girl on camera. And then I reached out to Adam and instantly he was like, no, I thought you were a professor. Like you were fine. I was impressed. Like there's a lot of opportunity I see for you. Like I'm basically gonna mentor you. And I was just like, uh, uh, the, the, didn't get to say a word. So <laughs> finding a mentor, getting to that place um, where you allow yourself to, you know, I don't wanna say get a little crazy, but just get out of your comfort zone and just jump in. Um, never realized how truly impactful having a mentor can be. Um, every mentor that I've ever had has offered me something different and everything has been completely valuable along the way. I've had significant takeaways from all of them. And it's just, like I said, getting outside of your comfort zone and listening to their advice and allowing yourself to be teachable. <laughs> and um, mentors really do have quite a capacity to affect the change that might be so completely um, something that you're afraid of, but just allowing yourself to get into that zone, it can be completely life-changing. Yeah, I mean, in my personal experience, like I can honestly tell you, uh, having a mentor can really help you kind of pierce through all of that noise and just truly find your sense of direction and, and purpose. I mean, and just being able to pursue whatever it is that you're dreaming of. And I know I, I, know I quite literally used to lie awake at night dreaming about my future and I can I can finally say that I'm on the path towards that image and I could not have done it without getting connected and so you guys literally just have to trust me on this one get out of your comfort zone and just do it but yeah so um that takes us into our next point here um and it, this was a huge one for me um and it, it just stop playing small man too many times have I been a victim of someone telling me that I wouldn't be able to accomplish something and later finding out that I could have done it anyway. And I, I listened to those people and I would change my direction every single time somebody told me no, because I, I'm thinking that that advice is coming from a good place. And a lot of times they were well-intentioned. You know, these people aren't telling me these things because they don't want me to succeed, because they don't want me to achieve those things. They're trying to look out for me. But at the same time, they didn't know it was possible either. And I mean, I was always somebody that just, whether somebody said no or not, like I always wanted to find a way, but I also didn't want to be somebody who wasted a bunch of my time going down the wrong road and then have to work my way all the way back up. So, you know, I guess the main point here is don't let yourself fall victim to small thinkers. Just because they don't think there's a way or just because it's too hard doesn't mean that there isn't a way for you to do it. And the only reason it's considered impossible is because nobody's done it yet. So if nobody's done it yet, why can't that be you? I mean, literally look at April and I right now. We're trying to build something that literally nobody's done before. And, you know, yeah, it's scary. But at the same time, like, nobody's put the time into it to truly make it, you know, and nobody eh, truly make it as valuable as it should be. Um, and we'll get more into that in a little bit. But um, for right now, I'll just go ahead and pass the mic back. Going off of what Aaron was saying, where you come from does not at all determine where you're going. I think his story is a testament to that. I know my story is a testament to that. Um, you can't ever let anyone tell you that you can't get there because what, like the way your mind works is not the way that someone else's mind works. Even if you guys share a lot of the same similar um, like thoughts and um, perspectives. And that's something I feel like I've had to learn the hard way a lot lately is like, you know, actually, Aaron and I had this conversation not that long ago where there were people that we were like, we wish we had more support from them. And Aaron's like, I'm just not going to try to be important to them anymore. Like, 
I just, I, I can't allow myself to get caught up in, in the small speakers of the other people that are around me, even if they don't support what I'm trying to do. And I can't let just the fact that we are here now or whatever this is right now, determine where I'm going from here because I, I'm very clear on my goals and I know where I'm going and I know what I wanna do and I know what I can do and I know how I'm gonna get there. Yeah, which brings us to our last big takeaway. And this one was also a huge one for me. And it's that whatever your anger is right now could be your launch pad in disguise. And what I mean by that is like when I had to leave basketball, I honestly thought it was the end of the world. Like I, it was just such a huge change for me, but little did I know that I was just being pulled backward to be launched into something that was more aligned with what I wanted than I could have ever thought possible because it aligned me with something that I didn't even know I wanted yet, but here we are. And it took me on this whole new journey. But prior to that experience, I had to be open to the opportunity. And as I said before, sometimes the best way to add to your life is to subtract from your life. And literally I'm living proof of that. I, I loved basketball, but it was holding me back from the even greater things to come for me. So as you guys can tell from our stories, um, clearly we've had some ups and downs so far in our professional careers, but that's really inspired us to create something that will make the lives of so many people and students behind us much easier and just more impactful. And I mean, if you're ready to take uncomfortable action, but you don't want to do it alone, that's what we're going to help you out with. So what we're trying to build here is a platform that's going to house a community of like-minded students and professionals to provide advice and support to help everyone grow alongside of each other and together. Along with that, what we're gonna create is uh, an almost quote unquote matchmaking experience where we could connect students and mentors with each other or you know, vice versa based on their skills and their mindset and their goals. What we're gonna pair, we're, sorry about that. We're going to pair you up with someone that's already done or is doing what you wanna do, as we mentioned before, that can help you navigate your journey and skip over any mistakes that they may have already made along the way. What we really just want to do is connect young, motivated individuals with successful business people that either want to help them in any way they can or may even need some help from those young individuals, which would allow them to gain practical experience working in their fields of interest and also give them the opportunity to learn from those mentors by actually being brought to the table and to learn the true skills and habits that they need to build and grow. We know how much finding a quality mentor has helped us accelerate our journeys for growth and success. And we felt that no student or individual should ever be denied that, that type of relationship or opportunity ever again. And we recognize that there's no platform or app or entity out there like this right now that's, that's making these types of connections. So that's where we really kind of just decided, why not us? And let's build one. And honestly, that's where you guys come in. We honestly really need your help. And uh, we are well aware of just how much value a service like this could provide to individuals and professionals alike. But in order to over deliver for you guys and make sure that you truly get the chance to experience the mentorship and the growth that you deserve, we need to know more about you and what you want and, or what you need to get out of an experience like this. We wanna make sure that we truly provide the service that you need and what better place to find that information than to ask for it from the source. So. We've created a Google form for you guys to fill out uh, with just some general information about yourselves and what you want slash expect from a relationship like this. And it shouldn't take any more than a couple of minutes. I, I know that we've already taken some decent time out of your day, but we'd be extremely grateful if you could fill that out for us. And after completing the survey, if any of you are interested in learning more about what we're building and would like to get more involved, please email April or myself. April's email is april at carswell.io or mine is Aaron Eiler at carswell.io. We know firsthand how powerful mentorship can be. And we know that if done right, we can create a process that's gonna change lives forever. But in order to do that, we need you. We need you to take a step out of your comfort zone and take a leap of faith with us. I know how much it hurt for me to not know where I was going or how to get there. And I knew that there had to be other people out there who felt the same way. And that's why we've brought this message before you today, because we know some of you out there feel the same. And we're going to help you come out of that rut. And together, we're going to help generations behind us avoid it all together. But that's why we started this presentation today in an attempt for you to, to get you rooting for us, but we wanted to end it with you rooting for yourselves. This is about you and your destiny and you got to put in the work, man. Like I literally have 767 followers on Instagram right now and 245 connections on LinkedIn. I, I know I'm not going to gain 5,000 followers in the next five minutes, but today one of you guys needs me. And 
I know I keep talking about changing the narrative and helping all these people who come behind us, but that, that's just my vision. That, that was never my goal. My goal isn't to reach millions. My goal is to reach one of you. Wow, Aaron, I, I love that last quote. It's, it's still my favorite part of this whole thing, even just writing this with you. Um, and with that, I just really want to thank um, Adam and Rena so much, Adam, for being who you are and your energy for bringing Aaron and I together um, on this project. Since I know him and I are both kind of trying to work to create very different projects and you were like, no, you guys like need each other. And it was so funny because he tried to pin us against each other and it just really backfired because we really are just like really great accountability partners. So um, Adam, just thank you for everything. I know I sent you these voice memos all the time thanking you, but it's just, it means a lot. And Rena, thank you for keeping us organized and accountable and checking in with us all the time. It just, it really means a lot. So we just wanted to take a second to appreciate you for allowing us to come up here on your platform and present this to everyone. And with that, um, Aaron, if you want to let everyone know how to connect with us. Yeah, I mean, as we just mentioned a couple of slides ago, you can um, reach out to us. I mean, my email is Aaron Eiler at carswell.io. April's is april at carswell.io. Uh, you can also find us on Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, I'm pretty much just Aaron Eiler on all the platforms. Uh, I don't think there's any other ones, but if there is, he might not be as cool. If he is, let me know. Um, <laughs> anyway, I have uh, my little um, cartoon headshot on there, so it should be pretty easy to find. And then you can feel free to message me on any of those if uh, with any further inquiries or whatever that looks like. All right, that's um, it. But yeah, uh, <laughs> that's really all we got. <laughs> Love it. Love it. All right. Clap it up. Let's clap it up. Clap it up for April and Aaron. I knew you guys were working on something cool, and I felt like I was at a... ClickFunnels conference just now. You guys knocked it out of the park. You're ready for the big stage. So, um, man, I, I had like notes and where I want to begin. And now um, I just want to take it so many different directions. So come back to center. Just want to say April and Aaron, thank you. And thank you, Mark and Anthony, because I know you guys got questions. I know Ron, who I see has got his hand raised. Ron, if you could punch your question in the chat so we can get to it. Um, and we are going to do a live breakout session with Aaron and April in 15 minutes. We're gonna do questions for about like the next 10 minutes, wind it down, but if you're with us here live, we're, we're gonna do a breakout Zoom room session. Um, and man, you guys just lit the stage on fire. Uh, I'm, I'm insanely impressed, so thank you. Um, you know, honestly, I'm just like watching this presentation, I'm like they don't even need me anymore, they got this. So um, let's see, I think I said Mark and Anthony in that order. Was if, Mark, if you wanna kind of pop the, questions off and then anthony and then as i mentioned ron i know it seems like you got some questions so if you can punch it in the chat and we'll go from there sure sure first and foremost guys uh amazing presentation um i definitely took some notes myself and one of the craziest quotes that i heard i think um both of you guys actually mentioned it was um sit in your silence that was just like mind-blowing and i'm gonna start doing that today so I appreciate you guys sharing that. Um, one question I have for you guys is, um, what do you guys, uh, where do you see this platform going within the next three to five years? Like what is the big goal? Yeah, I mean, I would say probably the most important one for us is just try to touch as many people as we can and just try to help more students avoid the struggles that we faced head on and you know, get involved with a mentor or somebody that's gonna help them accelerate their growth a lot sooner so they can, avoid, they can avoid a lot of the struggles that we had. And as far as the exact growth in the next three to five years, we don't know. But like I said, we're just gonna try to touch as many people as we can and make as big a difference as possible. And you know, truly just, like I said, just really try to help as many people as we can. Cool, cool. Um, I do have one more question for you guys. It's, it's pertaining to, um, your first bullet point, which, which is for mentorship. Um, I, I've been there. Oops, sorry, guys. So I, I've been there, and <laughs> I know that um, the typical cliche quote is when you're meeting someone is, hey, can I pick your brain? I think that statement has run its course, and it's, you know, pretty much going out the window now. So from your experience and, you know, reaching out to newbies who are coming into this space or whatever space they're coming into, how would you recommend that they 
bypass that mantra and actually reach a mentor who's willing to, you know, invest their time and educate them or help them along their journey. Yeah, 100%. I saw you on mute. Do you want want to hop in on that one? Yeah, I have a thought, but if you want to go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I would say for me, if I was going to give that advice to someone, I would just you know, go, you know, whatever it is, whether you're messaging them or you're going to see them in person, anything. Hi, my name is such and such. You know, I have this, you know, this is what I want to do. What, you know, what is your experience or just ask questions. Everyone always says ask questions. I think that is a great way to go about that. Not, can I pick your brain or what is your perspective on this? Or this is where I'm trying to go. Do you have any suggestions for how I can get there? Or do you have some time to have a call? So, you know, we can connect, even if it is just to pick their brain, ask them for that face to face. Cause that's, that's really what I did with Adam. I was like, Hey, I would love to connect with you. I'm getting ready to graduate. Just want to ask you about your experience. We connected and he was so great. Like I said, he didn't even let me talk. Like I, I was like, I want to do this. And he was like, Nope, I'm going to do this. We're doing this right now. I'm connecting you right now. So you just never know what you're going to get just by asking for that, that one-on-one in, in real time. Awesome. Going, going to what, <laughs> going to Westminster College helped these guys out a lot too. If anyone out there is looking for talented young professionals, you almost can't go wrong with the Titan. Um, but that's another thing to consider: is your alma mater is a great, great place to start. Mark, were you gonna say something else there? No, no, I'm all set. Okay, awesome, awesome, and um, cool. Yeah, so we got some more questions coming here in the chat. Gonna get to get to those in a moment, but gonna pass the rock over to Doctor Vecino. Anthony, what do you got for the for the panel? I'm actually not a doctor. I just play one on TV. So just wanted to be very transparent about that. So first, guys, like that was fantastic. Like Adam said, I felt like I was at a ClickFunnels like presentation, like you're on the big stage. I, I was taking I was taking some copious notes. I am I'm well noted up here. And there's a couple things I want to touch on that really stood out to me that Aaron, when you're talking about the anchor being like the launch pad, I think that's a really cool concept where sometimes you have to take a step back before you can take a step forward. It's like a rubber band, like loading up a slingshot. You have to go back sometimes so that you could be launched for it. And I really love that concept. And, you know, something that you both touch on is how the anonymity of the social networks, people that maybe aren't in your closest circle are some of the biggest supporters and yet your family and your friends, people that are closest to you are some of the biggest naysayers, the people that, and they do it out of place of love, right? Like they know you and they're afraid for you. They don't want you to step outside of the identity that they've crafted for you. So how do you find the courage, right? Because we talked about how, you know, high performers, they thrive in a state of fear because you're always operating at the edge of the comfort zone. So how do you practice that courage when you maybe don't have any at the, at that moment, because the first step you have to take is kind of, you know, pruning the negativity to find then the positive networks. So how do you do that? Ooh, can I start? I didn't see you running for the mic, Aaron. So for me, it is modeling other people. I, like we said, you find those other people that support you. But I think for me, it's finding those other people that are doing what I want to do too. So for example, there's a girl who's a hairdresser out in Arizona. She expanded her salon. She's a mom. She's a business owner. And I thought, oh my God, I don't want to be a hairstylist, but I want to be just like her. I want to do these things. She had a grand reopening for her salon and I flew out there to be there. I was like, I'm going to go meet her right now and be here in this moment, which might sound a little crazy, but we're friends now. So it's all fine. But I think just you know, getting inspired and maybe not even letting that fear step in. There was no part of me that was afraid to just kind of go out there and be in the moment with the people who inspire me most that I kind of forget that negativity on the outside and I'm dreaming about the life that I really want to have. Yeah, I think for me, um, I know, I actually, it's kind of funny, Anthony, and I had a conversation about this yesterday. Um, he'll have an episode coming out on the podcast here in a few weeks. But um, for me, um, it really comes back to uh, like, for me, I was extremely afraid to leave my tribe, if you will, where that's the group that I identified with the people that I hung out with, where I felt comfortable, where I felt like home, you know, but it, like I said earlier, it took me way too long to realize those people weren't helping me get to where I wanted to go. And I had to, in realizing that I had to really kind of, um, I'm trying to think of a good way to word this. Like for me, it, 
it wasn't so much of an active realization. It was that <laughs> the universe kind of threw me into a situation where I was forced to acknowledge the fact that these people weren't getting me anywhere. And it forced me into a situation where those people weren't around to help me anymore. And I truly really at that point had to sink or swim. And for me, that was, like I said earlier, when I stepped away from basketball, I didn't have that team of guys right there with me every day, helping me with whatever it was anymore. Like I wasn't furthering them anymore. They really weren't furthering me anymore. And that kind of created a small this band for a while. And I didn't feel right reaching out to them anyway. I felt like some sort of outcast. I didn't fit in with them anymore. That like I was completely abandoned in a sense. And that's not necessarily on any actions that they did. I'm just saying that I was out on my own at that point and forced to, you know, literally acknowledge everything that was going on in my life. And I had to truly step back from that to realize what else I wanted to do. And it took me a really long time. It took me almost a, a year or and some people it's going to take longer. Like, but I will tell you, like we said earlier, the sooner that you just acknowledge that pain, the sooner that you face whatever it is, it's going to speed up that entire process for you because you'll be able to see that much sooner what truly matters to you and what you truly want to pursue. And, and depending what that is, there's numerous different ways that you can go about it. Like for me, I wanted to build wealth. I wanted a certain lifestyle for myself and my family. And that's where it took me. And that took me to real estate, as I said earlier. And it's you know created this whole other journey. But for you, that's going to look totally different. And that's okay. But you have to commit to finding that and you have to commit to the fact that whatever that looks like, you're going to find it. And you have to be stubborn enough to get at it every day and search for that thing and find the right vehicle for you. For me, it was a mentor. And for you, it can be a mentor, whatever industry that looks like. But I know having somebody there as like a mentor for me has been the most valuable thing because had I not got connected, I wouldn't be doing any of this stuff. He helped me find a voice that I never knew I had and like that I'm here now presenting, like doing this whole thing. Like this was not a thing a year ago, like never, never. Like, but he saw something in me that I never would have seen, that I never knew was coming. And from this, like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to go off too much of a rant here, but um, I will say that in kind of closing is just, yeah, sit in that pain, face it and to go along with that, open yourself to opportunity. Just commit to finding a new passion, commit to finding that new goal and just open yourself up for whatever the universe throws your way. The passion is pouring out of the cracks, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not picking up on that. So um, Aaron, thank you. I do wanna get to Ron's question and then we'll wind it down for the sake of those with us here um, on the replay. Thank you for joining us in the replay. For those of those of you with us here live, we're going to do a little bonus session here in a few minutes. So um, Ron wants to know, April, Aaron, you guys can decide who uh, takes this one. But mechanically, how do you propose this working? Um, you know, there's a reason people are small thinkers, think big and go for it. But I think really, you know, what he's saying is how like how is this going to work? What's like the general framework of how Ground Zero is going to work? So. From my perspective, Aaron and I have talked a lot about development and we've gone back and forth about wanting to give that opportunity to everyone on a large scale because everybody needs an opportunity. It doesn't matter if you have that college degree or if you don't. There are people in the professional world that are looking for people that have skills that might not have a degree yet, but those people that don't, that aren't at that level might not even know that there's opportunities for them. So what does that look like? Um, and keeping that organized across various industries. So um, we've had a lot of conversations about whether we're starting small or is this going to be an app? Is this going to be separate apps? And that's really where we're at now in the midst of that conversation. Um, and that's still developing because you know this is something very new that we both have never done. And in the conversations that we've had before, even just yesterday, we were told, oh, this never works. And there's a reason these things always fail. And for me, I'm like, I'm writing those quotes down because no, there's a reason that this needs to happen. And that's what we are here to do. Like we had said before, five years ago, I had no degree. I was working three and four jobs at once. And I'm, I still have a lot of great skills. And had I never gone to college, I wouldn't have been connected with people, but I never would have known there would be an opportunity for me if there would be something like this to enable me to be able to do it. Yeah, and I just want to pop in real quick here, and I'll, I'll actually steal a quote from Adam on this one, because I had a quote, I mean, I had a conversation with him, um, dude, it was a little while ago now, but I asked him, I said, you know, if I start telling people about this, what's to keep anybody else with more connections or more power or more, you know, uh, what's a, a larger network, whatever that is, from stealing this and just 
taking it and running with it, you know, somebody with more power in whatever industry they're in or whatever. And he quite literally told me they're not Aaron Eiler. They're not April Munson. And that's what I, I will tell you that in that moment in time, it was like a punch in the face. Because, like it, it's hard to picture that being Aaron, but I can tell you that when he said that, it also made me realize that we're doing this from such an authentic place. And it's really something that we are truly passionate about because having gone through it and seeing how much of a, a sheer impact it's had on both of our lives. Like it's coming from such a place that we truly, truly, truly want to impact people and we truly want to make it work. And that's one of the reasons we did this today is because we want to tell, we want to tell more people about it and we want to take feedback from you. We want to learn how we can over deliver on this and make sure that you get the opportunity that you deserve out of that. And that's where I really think we're attacking it differently. And, you know, and we're not necessarily afraid to tell people that this is for the people that are going to come in and maximize the opportunity here. And if that's not you, don't even sign up, dude. Like, I'm sorry. And I don't want to say that to be insensitive. I don't want to say that, you know, to be rude or to single anyone out. But like, there's, there is a reason that not enough people do this. And it's because people don't follow through. And it's because people don't live up to their promises. And that's where we are trying to refine the network to the point that it's all about growth and support and that, you know, it's just a place where people can go and feel safe and support each other in whatever they're pursuing, whatever they're trying to grow into. And that I think is how we're doing it differently. It's just the, the where it's coming from, first of all, and, you know, just that we're not, Yes, we want to offer the opportunity to everyone, and I know I'm rambling, um, but at the same time, we know it's not going to work for everyone, and we're not necessarily afraid to acknowledge that either. That's right. The hungry mouths are getting fed, and that's that's really the uh, the underlying purpose, passion, whatever you want to call it, um, and I love it. And actually, Joe Coveney, who's in the uh, attendees right now, I hope he hangs out here with us in a little bit. He's someone who very uh, subtly brought that to the light for me the other day with what you guys are doing. I'm like, yeah, the hungry mouths are getting fed straight up. So um, Anthony, I know you got to bounce. So let's get your, uh, your goodbyes in and then we'll go, go over to Mark and, and really wind this thing down and bring it home. And by the way, guys, I don't know if you noticed Rena uh, turned her camera on. That's a first. So thank you, Aaron and April for your inspiration there. But Anthony, you got anything for us? <laughs> no, I just, I really appreciate you guys. I think this was fantastic and you're delivering something that's much needed in the space. Like to be able to connect young, hungry mouths with maybe some people who have a little bit of food that they can, they can offer up. I think that's huge because there's just nothing in that space right now. And I, I just want to congratulate and commend both of you guys for just an awesome presentation. This was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me guys. Anthony, what's the best way um, anyone can follow up with you and what you're working on? Smoke signals. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. No, you can you can find me over at uh, InvictusMultifamily.com or AnthonyVicino.com. So come find me. Yep. Go check him out, guys. Anthony's working on a lot of cool things. And uh, same goes for Mark. So Mark, any closing remarks? And uh, I know you've got your Monday meetup and a few other things going on. So closing remarks and best way to get in touch with you as well. Sure, sure. So um, again, guys, I appreciate you having me on. This was awesome. And just to piggyback off what Anthony says, uh, you guys are in a very niche niche um, space right now. And, you know, you're you're sort of like twerping a lot of uh, the norms, you know, not. So I appreciate you guys doing it. And again, you have my full support. Like I told you, Aaron, you guys have my full support. Whatever you need, I'm here. Uh, if you want to read, if you want to follow up with me, um, LinkedIn is the best place. I'm always on there. Mark Caesar, M-A-R-C-C-E-S-A-R. -C -C -E Shoot me a message, add me, and we'll connect. As um, Adam mentioned, I do host a weekly multifamily meetup um, on Monday, 7 Eastern. Um, the link should be in the chat. I'll drop it again, but it is, uh, you can go to bit.ly bit forward slash F-F-T-A-I. To, to sign up and you know just come and network and and connect thank you mark all right so ladies and gentlemen thank you again for investing your most valuable resource with us here today your time as we joined april and aaron on the presentation welcome to ground zero i'm feeling very welcome now if you found value in today's message and you're with us here on the replay smash that like button hit that subscribe button share it with your friends with your family any other hungry 
entrepreneurs that you know, whether it's on the getting started side or successful wanting to lend a helping hand side, it's really going to help the growth of Ground Zero. Um, same goes if you're with us on Facebook, smash that like button and le- drop a hashtag next level. Um, and yeah, April, Aaron, we're going to go into the breakout rooms now. Do you have any parting words? We'll go in that order. April, Aaron, before we shut this thing down. <laughs> sure. I just want to say thank you so much, Adam, for connecting us, like I said, and giving us this platform and building up this, this real confidence that Aaron and I are both like, no, this isn't for us. And then boom, hi, we're like oncoming tech entrepreneurs now. So I just, I'm really happy and thankful. And you as a mentor has completely changed my experience. So thank you so much for this. My honor. Yeah, I mean, I'll just come on and um, I mean, I can totally reiterate what April just said, but instead I think I'll apologize to everyone for running over today. (laughs) I think I'm the only one who's ever gone completely over the uh, time schedule for one of these. So I will apologize for that, but I just really hope that you found that little bit of value you need to take your next step. Love it. And uh, yeah, Marina, thank you for all you've been doing here behind the scenes, getting those links up. I'm going to have you drop the, uh, the link for the upcoming webinar for Raise Masters, which is our sponsor. Raise Masters is the number one mastermind for elite capital raisers. We'd love to have you join that, again, upcoming webinar, um, which is more information on the mastermind itself. So one more time, thank you, everyone in attendance, all those tuning in. Uh, my name is Adam Carr as well. Major shout out to Mark Caesar, Anthony Vecino, and then April and Aaron, your rock stars of the day. Go connect with everyone. There's links all in the comments here on Zoom and on Facebook, so you can't miss it. Got to give a shout out to Courtney Stone, by the way, too, who I know is here. And Courtney, I know you're probably going to be going back through this later and really refining our show notes. She's the best at that. If anyone thinks you're better, let's have a competition. <laughs> and yeah, guys, just remember, in all you think, say, and do. Take it to the next level.